So we have an opening hymn. It's number 21 in your book. We have our unchoir who is ready to come forward and sing and lead this particular song. It's called For the Beauty of the Earth. We're going to sing all four verses. Is that right? Oh, yeah. you guys are good. <laughs> and I'm going to step back and let you take it. So here's another microphone. We love microphones, right? See all ready here? Sing it out and sing it out. <laughs> All the money you can do that one. Whatever you want. We're pretty loud. Let's go to the fix up the recording. This is what we do when we don't have music. Singing. 
and each new life reminding you of the miracles of your existence. So with that said, it's my pleasure to invite back up here uh, for his message, Wonder and Awe, Dr. Dean Schock. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach. I'm going to have to move this around a bit here. And George is assisting me. Um, so I want to thank all the people who um, have helped me put together this PowerPoint. Am I good to plug in? Sure. Thanks. calling this wonder and ah, a, h, 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 h. And I think it'll make more sense as we go along. Um, whether it's thoughts about lasagna <laughs> or just your lovely giving hearts. Okay, so here we go. Life is full of difficult times as Stanley started off in her reading. Pandemics, wars, floods, and ugliness of all sorts. Indeed, if we focused on all the things going wrong in the world and in our lives, we'd have little or no time to appreciate anything else. I assure you that your life is not one of being condemned to any number of tragic circumstances. You also have lots of things to remind you of the miracle of your existence. So when I first thought about the theme <coughs> of wonder, this is what came to me at first. And uh, this is not my real expertise and interest necessarily give you all the facts about this James Webb telescope. These are photographs as far as we have ever seen and recorded in space. And I don't know about you, but I'm admitting for me, when I think about the size and distance and the beauty of what this is, it's really quite remarkable. So we're looking at the oldest galaxies ever seen, which were formed over 13 and a half billion years ago. This one is called the Pillars of Creation, and it's actually a small star-forming region within a vast Eagle Nebula. It's about 6,500 years away. And to give you another little bit more of information, this is actually stardust and stars forming. The universe itself is about 93 billion light years across. There are hundreds of billions of galaxies in the universe. And our universe is likely only one of many universes, potentially infinite number of universes. I think this deserves a wonder and an awe. What should I do? <laughs> yes, I did, sorry. <laughs> what I want to jump into next, though, because when I thought about the macrocosm, and just how big things can be, bigger than I think we can fully appreciate. I also think about the macrocosm. 
So these are red blood cells. Now because of my interest in mind-body medicine, um, and I have another slide to show you as well, <coughs> these are white blood cells and a cancer cell. It is to think about, while well, things can be so, so, so big, do you know that there are 30 to 38 trillion cells in your body? No. Now, here's a thought. You want to get a wonder and an awe? How do 38 trillion cells live and cooperate and, co <laughs> and work together with any possible thought of how that could happen? That's a wonder and an awe. And then also to remind you, because of my work with cancer, and often then talking with people about it, is that those cute little pink Im immune cells are much more powerful than that cancer cell. And so if we can do what we can to make sure that our immune system is functioning properly, we stand a very good chance of actually being able to gobble up the cancer cell, which is actually a much weaker cell biologically than the cute little white blood cells. Now, this is part of the microcosm for me, again, because it just fascinates me. This has only blown up five times. That's the face of an ant. I don't know. That's a scary little bug. But <laughs> on the other hand, this is just a, a not much more magnified snowflake. Uh, I think that's just incredible when we can look at the, the smaller part of so much of what is its natural beauty. And then some of you are probably familiar with Dr. Um, let me see if I can remember to pronounce his name correctly. His first name, Masar Masaru Amoto. And um, the research that he did showing that you can literally just write a word or a feeling or project a thought or a prayer or feeling toward a physical object. In this case, he did it by freezing very specific temperatures, water, and showed that when you project thoughts or prayers of self-love or beauty or passion, this is what the crystal of water looks like. This is the photo on the left of an ice crystal frozen from severely polluted water. The photo on the right is the same water refrozen after having been blessed by Dr. Emoto. One can plainly see that we do have the ability to not only heal ourselves, but our earth as well. I think that's pretty darn cool. When you think about how much water is in your body, and the power of your thoughts and feelings and all. Okay. Then, uh, Catherine and Steve and my wife and I went to the Redwood Forest earlier this year. And this is a, a nice one to uh, talk about for me because, you know, I can get fairly analytical and want to break things down a bit. Um, but there's something about the Redwood Forest. It's just to see them and be in them. It's one of those, you know, I don't have words for it. It just, honest to goodness, stops me. And like, this is good. So for me, this is maybe my, or at least as good a wonder and awe experience for me. And what I would encourage you to remember and think about in your own lives and make time for the things that bring you wonder and awe. And this is my favorite little, I'm going to call it a mountain stream, but it's called the St. Haley Falls. And I dare say that some of you have been there, and if you haven't, you do want to do this. So it's just east of Springfield, just go out 20. It's before you get to Belknap Springs, if it give you a sense of where it is. But to me, as beautiful um, of water and waterfalls, I think of the fog hiking. Have you, have you been there at Sahel Falls? Yes. Yeah. Oh my, it's so special. And then, of course, the Mackenzie River. And all of this is so close at hand. You know, when I think about the, the Redwood Forest and waterfalls, speaking of which, um, yeah, and I don't think anyone have a question that, you know, there's just something about waterfalls. 
in sunsets. Yeah. This was actually taken from our house. And so here we think about where we live. And you have access to the ocean like this and these beautiful sunsets. And there's something about mountains. Holy smokes. Nature. As you had in your post a bit earlier. But nature and God. And then the aurora. So, I was surprised when I read into this that these northern lights are actually formed in the interior of the sun. And some of these solar gases and winds filter through the Earth's magnetic shield and form these northern lights. This is actually stargazers taken from a pot <coughs> on our deck at home. But there's just something about flowers. In fact, it reminds me of a little story, a personal experience I had. You know, I've done so much work with channeling and, and meditating. And um, however, you just, I, my thoughts go sometimes. And I remember saying to whomever, whatever I was speaking with at the time, is in my next lifetime, I want to be the one who designs flowers. <laughs> Do you know what the response was? You are the one who designed now, it wasn't just me, guess what? Is it come to a more fully appreciation of wonder or not of who we really are? And you actually have done this. You created the northern lights and the mountains and so forth. I mean, it's a staggering beauty, but a staggering thought to really entertain who we really are. And this is a very special experience for me. This is me and a butterfly lighting on my hand and, and iPhone while I was taking pictures of butterflies <laughs> at the Tucson uh, Botanical Gardens and in their butterfly. What do they call it? Their butterfly... doesn't matter. Um, yeah, their butterfly house. Anyhow, um, I, you know, again, it's one of those things I can't quite put into words how cool this was. Here I am thinking how cool these butterflies are, just getting their pictures and seeing them and all. And one just lit right on my hand while I was taking this picture. And then Shelly, my wife, took, took a picture of this. But then when I thought about the butterflies, I also made a note about fireflies. We call them lightning bugs or fireflies. If you've never seen them, you have to do this and you're like, you're going to talk about something magical. Yeah. And ladybugs. So there's something about the insect world that can be pretty goddamn cool and special. <coughs> now, this is a very special story. This is actually a baby chickadee, and that is my wife's hand. So I'm going to take a minute to say more about this story and about wonder and awe. Now, most of you know, I think, that I made quite a few birdhouses out of driftwood. And I don't know how many years this goes back now, not that long ago, maybe four. And um, I had uh, first just started making and putting them in my own yard. I, I thought, well, I saw one where I thought, oh, I can make that, wouldn't that be fun? Called yard art. So when I had maybe five of them, I placed in my yard. And um, so pleased, and of course, when one of them, you know, birds came to nest. And so we watched. And if you've ever seen the birds, especially chickadees, not that experience, but with chickadees when they nest, they fly about 50 miles an hour right into that hole. And it's like, how did they possibly do that? But yeah, so you had the wonderful experience of watching, you know, I, a mother and father, as far as I know, come and feed the birds. And then at some point, unfortunately, just, they're gone. They're just gone. Except what happened was I was in my garage building more birdhouses. And we were also having our deck built at that time. The air compressor is going that I used for my nailer. There was actually quite a racket going on, both inside the garage and just outside, when this little bird came and lit on my workbench, two, three feet away from me, at most. And it just sat there in front of me while I was making the birdhouse. And finally I decided, I need to let Shelly know that this bird is here. It was just such a unique experience. And it was flying around for a bit, but seemed in no hurry to leave it all. 
until finally it lit underneath the bench, and Shelly actually got that close to it that she could have petted it. And the bird was hardly frightened, threatened by us at all. And so as you might imagine, I was curious to go inside and ask about this experience. And so I'll share with you now what I was told, which I find pretty unique and special. The baby bird alighting on your work table is normal for you. That there would be a sign of gratitude from the bird kingdom. If you were surprised that this is normal, it is a distortion. You have been witness to the power and connection with nature. Connecting and communing with nature helps you become aware of the roots of your being. It is high time that all beings in nature are recognized for their perception and integrity. You are in relationship with the bird kingdom. Birds, plants, and other beings are far more perceptive than human beings give them credit for. The joy, love, and peace that go into the creation of these homes are felt by the birds. It is a unique way for you to have a new perspective on love. So, thank you, sweet little bird. falling apart and we get sick and God knows what goes wrong. Our plants won't grow and, and then there's babies and kittens and puppies. And we can forget. This is a picture of my wife on the right here and a best friend of hers for about 50 years. And we were just at a wedding this summer. Her daughter was, their youngest daughter was having getting married, and it's just when I was going through old photos and thinking of things to include, and I'm not sure Shelley fully appreciates my plastering her on the screen like that, <laughs> but um, it's just when you think you get about special moments, and things to reflect on when otherwise things may not be going so well, as to remember really special friends, and the meaning they have and the importance they are in our lives. And then, <laughs> there are foot friends. Mm -hmm. And so we were celebrating Steve's birthday down here in the lower left. And uh, our wonderful host, Deborah and Jean, and Jay and Dick. And so on Sundays, we tend to get together and watch football games together beyond our friendships here at Food Fruit. Again, just a reminder to you to celebrate your friends. You know, when I, I did so much work in wellness and asking people to think about what matters absolutely most in their lives. And the big three were always starting with your spiritual beliefs, family, and friends. So just to remind you how important friends really are and nurture them like crazy. And I know Shelly wouldn't care for this necessarily. This is Shelly and me when we got engaged. We were at Bearskin Neck, Massachusetts. Anybody know where that is? This, well, let me just jump ahead. That, Red, um, they call it, I think just motif number one. That red building, without exaggeration, may be the most photographed building in the world. Right. It is that iconic, that popular, where people go to vacation and where it's like nothing has really changed until maybe they painted the place. Um, it's just such a special place, and Shelly and I happened to be there at that time and unplanned. I got engaged that weekend. And this is actually talked about again as the most photographed and painted or whatever. Something that we actually purchased there. It's in, I said Bearskin Neck, which is a part of Rockport, Massachusetts. So anyhow, you know, it's a time to remember special friends and to honor special friendships and what really, really matters. Then, I've talked to you before about the young man I've been working with who has the inoperable brain tumors. This is him and his family. This was taken actually a number of months ago now by USA Today. He was actually the person, oh, I forget the term they would have used, but like the, 
glioblastoma patient of the month. And uh, I remember at that time, he wasn't given a week to live before I ever met him. This goes back to May. I want to read you uh, from my progress notes this past week. This young man is very much alive. So now, he came to me, and I've had experiences like this before, because now, I mean, he's supposed to be dead. I mean, well, he understands this quite well. Um, he said he wants to go buy a new home. No, let's get real. This fellow absolutely should be dead. And his prognosis still is he should be dead. But he wants to go buy a new home. We're talking maybe a million dollars. What would you tell Brian? For real? And so this is what I learned and what I've shared with Ryan in kind of a an attitude or a, just an approach to his life now. Live like you're going to live. But of course we always go inside and check, right? So here is the latest. He calls this inner wisdom within himself Pearl. And here's what Pearl said. It's time to take steps. And I'm putting Pearl, this is like, it's the right decision to buy the house. It's the right time. I'm going to live like I'm going to live. And then in the last session we had, Pearl said, you're back on track. Keep going. Boy, I'm feeling this. Stay steady. And then Ryan's response, almost always, when we do these inner exercise and make this connection, I feel great. So, however we think about miracles, so in the true sense of the world, this is a miracle, and I swear to you, this guy's going to make it, and do actually quite well. But know that, despite all the other crazy things going on, there are miracles going on around us all the time as well. And then this is my last slide. When I was in Tucson last year, um, we took time to go to um, this mission, the Spanish mission, which I can't believe I remember it from me to tell you about. Here we go. It's San Xavier de Bach mission. It's 10 miles south of downtown Tucson. But it was just, I had to mention the importance of spirituality. I've already just mentioned to you that truly across the board in working with thousands of people, what is absolutely most important to most people are their spiritual beliefs. And then however you understand the grandness of who you really are. I've said to you so many times now, written about and talked about, who we are is really one with all that is. <coughs> and so however we approach our spiritual beliefs and our understanding of a bigger picture of the universe and who we are, this is just a symbol for me to help bring to our awareness the importance of remembering who we really are, the core truth of who we really are. Okay. So now, I want to go into a meditation, please. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I think I will use the light. You can turn the one on next to the, on the wall there, too. Well, maybe that's more than enough. Yeah, turn off yours. Is that good for you? Yes. Okay. So, please make yourself comfortable and close your eyes. Unlimited beauty surrounds you. Miracles are truth. Marvel at these moments of wonder. Honor and revere the artistry, harmony, and order of life. Be in absolute awe of what is behind 
the creation of all that is. Even more than this is to consider that we are one with that. We are God, creator, manifesting in physical form. Through all of life's turmoil, we are not alone. We are all one. We are the way, the truth, and the life. For we are God. Have I not said you are all gods and sons of the Most High? That's from Psalms 82, 6. All power is yours. Miracles are merely translation of denial into truth. That's from A Course in Miracles. We are easily distracted and have forgotten our true identity. Let us appreciate moments of wonder and awe and also honor and marvel at the truth of who we are. Let's take time now, please, to appreciate these moments. Take your time. as well. Safely rest. God is not. Attention to the person behind the screen. <laughs> HDMI too, don't you want it? Okay. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Um, <sighs> where are we? We have selected the Peace Health Palliative Care Program to be our community partner for this month and next, which means we raise money through your generous gifts to give to them so they can continue their work. If you know about palliative care, they provide specialized medical care for people with serious illness. They focus on relieving the symptoms and stress of a serious illness. The goal is to improve quality of life for both the patient and the family. Palliative care is provided by a specialty trained team that works together for a patient's, with the patient's other doctors to provide an extra layer of support. And it's for any age, doesn't matter. Um, our palliative care program here in Florence is quite robust, and yet they still need our, our support as best we can do that. So your contribution to this program can be placed in our offering basket. Very easy here, we have a glass of water, I don't want to spill. There's Peace Health on this side. And on this side is a contribution as you are able to our particular fellowship. We are self-funded. And uh, your contributions help to sustain us every single week of every single year. We 
We've been doing this now for since 2004. So we're going on 18 years at this particular fellowship. So I ask that you consider your contribution to uh, both Peace Health and to our Florence Fellowship. And uh, as we go forward with this, I'm going to ask Catherine if you would help on this end. Julie, will you help on this end and help facilitate? We're going to start in the back. We'll work our way forward. And as we begin, I ask that you repeat after me. Divine love through me. Divine love through me. Blesses and multiplies all that I am. Blesses and multiplies all that I am. And all that I give. All that I give. And all that I receive. And all that I receive. I am prosperous now. I am prosperous now. Blessed be. Blessed be. If you are unable to give today, that's no problem. Just accept the basket with love and pass it to the next person. So we don't have any music to play, but we're going to just do it nice and quiet. Think about the images Dean provided earlier and um, just be with that for a few moments. As we conclude this, maybe Stanley, should we invite the kids back in? So we can get them back in here for the extinguishing of the chalice and announcements. Listen to that chitter chatter. That's music to our ears, right? Listen like this. If someone is watching this on our recording, um, I invite you to make your contribution. If you'd like to send us a check to P.O. Box 2502, payable to FOOF. You can designate if you want it to go to us or to our community partner. You can also donate online on our website under the Donate button. My concept. I offer this. I'm going to give this to our particular fellowship because this is my spiritual home. I wish it to prosper. So uh, thank you for your spiritual practice of giving. Your contributions are received in grateful appreciation. So let's extinguish the chalice, and then we'll do some announcements. Oh, and what? then we'll do announcements. And we're going to do announcements. Oh, okay. We're going to extinguish the chalice first. Do we? I, I extinguish this with the words by Steve Crump. That which is worthy of doing, create with your own hands. That which is worthy of repeating, speak with a clear voice, that which is worthy of remembering, hold in your hearts, and that which is worthy of living, go out and live it now. So uh, turn, off your, turn your phones back on if you'd like. We're going to conclude with announcements. Uh, in the program, you'll see our printed uh, announcements on the right-hand side. We have some birthdays and recurring programs. Also, I have two extra tickets for the Crab Crack. If you or somebody you know wants to go to the Crab Crack on February 4th, like two, um, I have a table reserved, table for nine, a foof table for that particular event. So, uh, yeah, you'll join Rayma, Julie, Janine, Ron, Paula, Jennifer, and me. We'll have a good old time. So, okay. Any other announcements, starting with Catherine? Yes, come on forward. First, I want to thank, Ash, thank Ashley Page for organizing or taking over the organization of the CARE Committee since June. All the things she's done behind the scenes and to help us just filter through uh, who needed help and whatever. I want to thank her. And, let's see, now it's time to regroup again and have a meeting. Have a meeting. Maybe there are some new members who would like to join the CARE Committee. Um, and for all of us that are still doing it, you know, redefine what we do and what we're willing to do. And uh, kind of post-COVID or 
whatever, what we really want to bring to the, to the pastoral care committee. And as Sally mentioned to me before, maybe it's not just when someone is ill or really or isolated that we go. Maybe it's just reaching out in friendship. You know, taking the time to really sit with each other and getting to know each other that way. That's caring and that's pastoral care as I well. I could use that. If anybody wants to call yeah. and schedule a time to spend, okay, there I'll be go. available. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. And see me if you're interested and also I'll We'll get a meeting going toward the end of this month. Thank you. And I know, Mark, you have a program that's coming up. Uh, what's the date? It is a week from today, today at 1.30, uh, Youth Climate Courts. It's Youth Climate. It's going to be at the Presbyterian? No, it's at the Episcopal mm -hmm. Church. At the Episcopal Church, Alva Spruce and 19th. Right. 1.30. Yeah. Okay. And it's in the e-blast. So when you get your newsletter, you'll see the flyer on that. So share uh, your concerns and be there to help support Mark and the others on the youth climate concerns, okay? Are we concerned about the youth or are the youth concerned about the climate? I think both. I think both, okay. Are there any other announcements anyone would like to share? Yes, Anne. The emergency cold weather shelter. You know, many of you know it's over here across from the yes. fan park. Yes. They are reopening and we need help with feeding. We have 41 some people there and we try to feed them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So I have Pat Burke's phone number if any of you are willing to do some cooking for the emergency cold weather shelter. It's a tremendous service, but they've had so many bad nights. They've had to stay open. They were open the whole Christmas and New Year's, the whole time. And I think 43 people one night was their most. But they're running short of volunteers. So if you could cook a huge pot of something for 40 people for a dinner or whatever, I have Pat Burke's phone number and I'll so look at See, and after service today, yeah, they, uh, they're, they're cooking food, they're delivering it. You don't have to serve it or anything. Put it in some throwaway containers if you want. Make a bunch of burritos. Lasagna. <laughs> Just saying. They could use some food on these certain days that they are open from the breakfast. I think they just do breakfast and dinner. So if you're interested in helping out, that would be great. Okay? Thank you. So closing words. Yeah. Anybody else? What? Yes? I just want to thank all those that came out and helped with the free lunch. We free served, lunch help? We served 45 meals wow. uh, last Thursday and uh, good turnout. And uh, hope I get someone that'll help leave me as coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Don, for all your caring on that. Yeah. We close today with these words from Reverend Scott Taylor titled, Home is Always Waiting. When the weight of the world tips us over, and when the winds of the world leave us spinning, when the voices of the world lead us astray, may we remember that here at FOOF, Home is always waiting, with stillness to calm us, friends to anchor us, and voices to help us find our way. Blessed be. Blessed be. So we're going to close. We are probably, I'm going to ask George to play, George, uh, play Jeff singing our peace song. I invite you to gather in a big circle, hold hands, lock arms if you want, and maybe quietly listen to the words again. And listen to Jeff sing this song. And at the end, we raise our hands, as we do always when, when it begins with me. We raise our hands. So um, if you want to sing, sing. I'm going to sit and quietly listen. Gather around in a big circle. And also, when we're done, Dean will be around if you'd like to sit and talk with Dean about his message today. And be sure to stop by the Food Cafe when you're done and uh, have a cup of coffee or a light refreshment and continue our fellowship together. So we can sort of yes. gather around, get a little closer, wow, we get can closer, do it. and George will play our peace song. <laughs> so if you don't know the words, you can listen and just enjoy. Thank you, George.